following off time allows tissue to start a return to baseline temperatures prior to the next micropulse. Repeating this pulse train can limit the overall thermal spread to the adjacent tissue. This tissue sparing modality allows physicians to perform therapeutically effective treatments without the coagulation seen with conventional CW laser therapy. Adjusting the micropulse settings allows the physician flexibility and fine control of energy being delivered. Yeah, I, I would strongly encourage uh, anybody to, to try subvisible uh, diode micropulse for retinal vascular disease in their office. Uh, uh, if for no other reason, it's harmless. Uh, that aspect alone changes how you, you view laser treatment, how you manage patients. Patient acceptance is extremely high. Your stress level is extremely low. Uh, it fits in perfectly with everything else you're doing to manage retinal vascular disease. You can use it with combination therapy. You can re retreat the patients uh, whenever you feel necessary. Uh, with absolutely no risk. And that is a, uh, a change that you really can't appreciate until you start doing it, and you'll find it's a very positive experience for you and your patients. Main thing, I would encourage you, as I was, I was the, one of the biggest skeptics, uh, as Iridex knows all too well when this first came out. But after several patients, uh, it was pretty impressive, particularly the improvement in vision that was out of sync with what the OCT thickness would lead you to think the vision should be. And so there's an, there's an exciting area here that's yet to be explored of how stimulating the RPE in a non-destructive manner can lead to improvement in visual acuity that is not simply keeping in step or in proportion with the OCT thickness or the leakage on fluorescein angiography. I think that from now and in the future, according to the literature, uh, any physician and ophthalmologist to modify the approach from the standard coagulation and destruction of the retina to a system which spares the retina. And micropulse is the currently the only way to treat the retina and obtain results clinical and to prevent any scotoma and so on. I tell them, if this technology doesn't help them, it's not going to harm. So there is no risk. Because what, what, what I definitely can state to you and to my patient is, okay, if it doesn't work, definitely it's not going to harm. So it's a very, very selective treatment. It's a very, you know, selective. So that's the way I approach it. I suggest a better treatment, more selective, and probably safer treatment over our current standards of, in terms of laser treatment. In managing our diabetic patients, uh, we should focus on, on giving them the best treatment ever, including targeted therapy. Targeted therapy in lasers become more and more focused now in micropulse because the micropulse doesn't deliver the whole wide uh, uh, the, of temperature damage full pulse gives. So, and I think it's very efficient in uh, having a good response in the less advanced disease where uh, only laser can have a, a beneficial long-term effect. So think about it and try to adopt it because now you can know the difference between the real thermal damage and the impact on the retina and a sub-threshold uh, uh, treatment where we really have a nice response keeping the uh, visual uh, the retina, the retina as good as it can be.